Good day. Welcome dear students to the 11th lecture of mechanics of solids. In the last class we discussed three elastic constants. Uh, from the stress strain relationship we developed three elastic constants. These are the properties of a material. The first elastic constant was Young's modulus of mo or modulus of elasticity. E is equal to stress by strain. Stress by strain. So within elastic limit the ratio of stress and strain is called Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity and which gives the stiffness of the material. So that is a property of the material which gives the stiffness of the material. And the second um, constant is modulus of rigidity or um, shear modulus and which is the ratio of shear stress and shear strain. Shear stress and shear strain within elastic limit the ratio of shear stress and shear strain is modulus of rigidity or shear modulus and which gives the um, ability to change the shape of the material okay based on this g value we can say a particular material uh, can be easily deformed by changing its shape or not so that is the significance of this g value and next to third elastic constant is uh, bulk modulus k k that is equal to direct stress by volumetric strain volumetric strain bulk modulus and <coughs> direct stress is nothing but uh, the stress which is ang, uh, acting in every direction equal in equal um, magnitude the stress is acting in every direction then we can say that is a direct stress for example hydrostatic stress and the volumetric strain is, uh, is the change in volume per original volume okay and these two uh, direct stress and volumetric strain ratio is called bulk modulus and the significance of this bulk modulus is uh, compressibility of the material okay if the k value or bulk modulus is very high for a particular material then we can say um, which is less compressible in nature okay so we discussed these three elastic constants in the last class next we are going to discuss uh, another elastic constant which is called Poisson's ratio Poisson's ratio we use the letter mu letter mu for Poisson's ratio <coughs> sometimes in, uh, some, in some textbook we use V or 1 by M okay all the letters are used to represent Poisson's ratio <coughs> the Poisson's ratio is also a, uh, a elastic constant which is also a material property and it will vary with respect to material for steel uh, the Poisson's ratio mu will be a particular value for aluminium it has another value so it is a material property okay it's very with respect to the material so for example uh, for the explaining this poisons ratio consider a rectangular bar with the length l and uh, diameter or oh, sorry width b with the b okay length L and width B. It's subject to a tensile force. A tensile force F. Okay. So when this bar is subject to tensile force F, what happened? The final shape will be so this is the initial length L. When we apply a tensile force, of course its length will increase. Its length will increase okay and its length increased from l to l plus delta l that is the change in length delta l is the change in length okay but here when we apply a tensile force its length is increase at the same time one more dimensional variation occur in this rectangular bar that is B B with B what happened to this with B when we supply an external force in the axial direction the 
width b is in, is actually perpendicular to the direction of force length l dimension length l is parallel or in line with this applied force but this width b is perpendicular to the direction of applied force so what happened to this to this width b when we supply a tensile force axially length of course increases but the width will width will decrease so the width will decrease uh, i can say this is the final shape of the rectangular bar after we apply the tensile force this will be the final shape of the bar okay this will be the final shape so here we can see length increases at the same time the width of the bar decreases or if it is a circular bar the diameter will decrease okay so in all material this will happen so for example if we can you you in this material i am applying a tensile force you can see the change in dimension change in dimension so length increases at the same time we can see the change in this width or if i apply compressive force we can see if i apply compressive force what happen is width increases you can see that so there will be a lateral deformation in along with the longitudinal deformation okay along with the longitudinal deformation there will be a lateral deformation also so what is longitudinal and uh, lateral deformation when a body is subjected to uh, a normal stress there will be axial deformation that means uh, its length will change okay so the ratio of this axial deformation to original length of the body is known as longitudinal strain longitudinal strain so first one is longitudinal strain so here this body is subjected to a axial tensile force so in the axial direction what is the dimension this length okay length is the axial dimension and width is the width dimension is perpendicular to the uh, direction of force applied okay so in the direction of force applied the dimension is length l so longitudinal strain is equal to the right of the ratio of axial deformation to the original dimension so here the variation in the axial direction is delta l so delta l by original length original dimension is l so delta l by l is the longitudinal strain next one is lateral strain lateral strain here in this lateral strain the strain at the right angle to the direction of applied load here the load applied is in this direction at the right angle or perpendicular to the direction of load what is the deformation or what is the strain that is longitudinal strain so longitudinal strain is equal to here b is the uh, initial width and the change in width is equal to and for example this final width is equal to b minus delta b because here what happened under this tensile load length increases but at the same time the width decreases that is why here minus b minus delta b so what is the change in width delta b delta b by b okay so when a body is subjected to this type of axial force not only does it elongate but it also contract laterally so along with this elongation some contraction occur laterally and if it is applied with a compressive force here uh, actually we supply a compressive force what happen it's deform in axial direction by a contraction and it's expand in the lateral direction so in the longitudinal direction it uh, contract when we supply a compressive force and in long, lateral direction it expands okay so that is the deformation 
so this is delta b by b for uh, a rectangular bar and this will be delta d by d delta d by d for a uh, circular bar where lateral dimension is diameter okay so this is longitudinal and lateral strain so the ratio of this the ratio of this lateral strain and lateral strain and longitudinal strain is called this is this ratio is a constant for a particular material this ratio will be a constant and this is called poisson's ratio this is called poisson's ratio so poisson's ratio is equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain and there is a condition for this um, poisson's ratio the ratio of lateral strains to longitudinal strain is constant for a given material that should be <coughs> um, homogeneous and isotropic in nature and when the material is stressed only up to elastic limit same condition for the hooks law the stress acting on the material stress directly on the material should be within elastic limit and the material should be homogeneous and isotropic in nature then we can say the lateral strain by longitudinal strain will be a constant for that material and that constant is called poisson's ratio and which is denoted with the letter mu or 1 by m or v we can use any letter in uh, most of the textbook we use mu actually mu is this is mu this is mu okay we use mu letter to represent poisson's ratio and here in this we give a negative sign for poisson's ratio this is because <coughs> uh when we supply tensile force here in the uh, longitudinal direction expansion happen but in uh, lateral direction it is a contraction okay so the deformation is opposite in nature that is why we give a negative sign in this equation okay we give a negative sign and it is a dimensionless quantity and uh, um, most of the material is value is range from 0.25 to um, 0.33 this is the range of mu value for most of the material and of course it will be um, when we apply a um, particular load axially the deformation will be higher in the longitudinal direction okay and lateral deformation will be lower than that of longitudinal uh, deformation okay so its value is vary from 0.25 to 0.33 and the range of mu value is the range of mu value mu is range of mu value is between minus 1 to 0.5 this is the range of mu value this vary from minus 1 to 0.5 okay so poisson's ratio is another uh, similar to this e g k another material property or elastic constant is mu poisson's ratio and it is the ratio of lateral strain and the longitudinal strain lateral strain and the longitudinal strain similar to this elastic constants this mu value can be applied only where the stress is applied within elastic limit on a homogeneous isotropic material okay that is mu and what is the significance of mu here we can see the mu is equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain okay lateral strain by longitudinal strain so if the mu value is higher for a particular material mu value is higher for a medical material that means for a particular material mu value is higher higher for another material mu value is very low what it means for a material with the mu value higher that means compared to this material for a particular longitudinal strain 
lateral strain also will be higher okay if the mu value is higher for a particular material for a same longitudinal strain the lateral strain will be higher and if the mu value is lower for a particular material then for a particular longitudinal strain lateral strain will be lower okay then for a same um, denominator numerator will be higher for this one and numerator will be lower for this one okay what it means for a particular longitudinal strain longitudinal strain strain means the uh, strain in the axial direction strain in the axial direction for a particular longitudinal strain if this lateral strain is also higher then we can say we can um, drawn into thin wires we can reduce the diameter to very small value okay so with respect to increase in the length the diameter or the lateral dimensions can be reduced can be reduced if the mu value is higher that means this mu value will if the mu value of a particular material is higher then we can say that is a ductile material this will be a more ductile material what is the reason if the mu value is higher then for a particular longitudinal strain the lateral strain will be also higher okay lateral strain will be higher that means if we change the dimensions if you draw drawn a particular raw material a ductile raw material through a die then with respect to increase in length the dimension the lateral dimension diameter or width of the rod also decrease into very small value so we can draw a raw material into very thin wire that is the main uh, characteristics of a ductile material so it is very highly deformable so mu value is higher then that is a ductile material okay so that is the another elastic constant mu value this is the significance of the mu value next one is next one is the relationship between sorry uh, before that we will discuss about biaxial and triaxial deformation so triaxial deformation okay triaxial deformation here we only discuss the deformation in one direction only the stress applied in this single x direction okay single x direction single direction stress acting on this and we uh, calculated this e value g value k value and mu value for this rod subjected to only stress in one direction but but actually <coughs> the stress may apply or may act on a material in three direction so that is triaxial deformation what happened to or what is the nature of deformation for a solid or for a body subjected to stress in three direction here this body is subjected to stress in only one direction sigma x there is no sigma y there is no sigma z so next we are discussing about a body subjected to stress in three directions okay for that again consider rectangle cube okay consider this cube and in this cube the stress is acting in every direction sigma x sigma y and sigma z the stress is acting in three direction okay <clears throat> next i am going to find the deformation in this is the x direction this is the x direction this is y and this is z okay 
okay x y z next i am going to find the deformation in x y and z direction okay <clears throat> so what are the stresses what are the strain in x y and z direction because of this sigma x because of this sigma x what is what are the strain in x y and z direction okay so next i am writing the strain in x y is a direction due to due to sigma x sigma x und down x y z direction strains what are they because of the sigma x similar to this problem because of the sigma x there will be a strain in this axial direction in the x direction what is that that is epsilon x epsilon x change in length delta l by l okay so due to this sigma x the strain in x direction will be epsilon x or we can say um, epsilon x okay epsilon x then what is the strain in y direction due to sigma x strain in y direction this is the y direction due to sigma x here again the sigma x is this one and the question is what is the strain in this direction in y direction we know lateral strain this will be lateral strain so lateral strain is equal to lateral strain is equal to from this equation lateral strain is equal to longitudinal strain into poisson's ratio what is longitudinal strain epsilon x that is a longitudinal strain so lateral strain equal to epsilon x into mu so here because of sigma x strain in y direction is equal to mu into epsilon x mu into epsilon x similarly what is the strain in z direction that is also a lateral strain for the sigma x this y direction and z direction is perpendicular to the direction of x so this sigma z or a strain in z direction will be also a lateral strain for this x direction so what is the strain in z direction due to sigma x that is also will be mu into mu into epsilon x mu into epsilon x okay so we got the strain in x y and z direction again again strain in x y and z direction due to sigma y due to sigma y okay what is the strain in x y and z direction so here in this sigma y this is sigma y so this will be the longitudinal strain this will be the longitudinal strain so if the sigma y is acting in this direction what is the strain in this direction in the same direction for example this one is sigma y for example this one is sigma y what is the strain in that direction it will be epsilon y it will be epsilon y so strain in in the same direction sigma y is acting in the y direction and the strain in the y direction will be epsilon y okay then what is the strain in x direction for sigma y is acting in this direction so this is the longitudinal strain and this x direction and z direction will be lateral strains okay because lateral strain is what is the lateral strain lateral strain is a strain in perpendicular to the direction of force so the force of stress is acting in y direction so sigma x sigma z 
or sorry epsilon x epsilon z will be the latter state so because of this sigma y what is the strain in x direction it will be mu into epsilon y mu into epsilon y similarly the z direction mu into epsilon y okay that is mu into longitudinal strain that is equal to lateral strain okay using this equation lateral strain is equal to mu into longitudinal strain again strain in x y z due to sigma z sigma z acting acting in this direction the strain in the same direction will be x direction will be z direction will be epsilon z epsilon z and other two directions are lateral strain directions so this will be mu into epsilon z this also will be mu into epsilon z we got the strain in x y z direction due to sigma x sigma y sigma z we got this three uh, direction strain in the different directions what is the total strain in x direction total strain in x direction due to sigma x sigma y sigma z this will be the total strain in x direction what is the total strain in y direction due to sig this is due to sigma x this is due to sigma y this is due to sigma z total strain in z direction so we can write the strain in x direction is equal to direction equal to this one add this three strain epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y plus mu into epsilon z strain in y direction equal to add this three mu into epsilon x plus epsilon y plus mu into epsilon z in z direction add this three values that is mu into epsilon x mu into epsilon y plus epsilon z okay and what is epsilon x here in this what is epsilon x epsilon x equal to sigma x by e because what is e e is equal to sigma x by epsilon x stress by strain is equal to e then epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e so this will be sigma x by e plus mu this first equation the first equation is equal to mu into what is epsilon y epsilon y that is sigma y by e okay because sigma y by epsilon y equal to e so epsilon y is equal to sigma y by e plus mu into sigma z by e and the second equation is mu into mu into epsilon x sigma x by e plus epsilon y sigma y by e plus epsilon z plus mu into sigma z by e the third equation equal to mu into epsilon x mu into sigma x by e plus mu into sigma y by e plus epsilon z sigma z by e this is the strain in x direction this is the strain in y direction this is the strain in z direction Okay, strain in x, y, and z directions. Okay, so total strain in x direction is y direction and z direction. Next direction it is equal to sigma, sigma x by e minus. Oh, one more, one, one mistake, one mistake. Uh, forward to 
add the diamond add the minus sign here one thing is that here when sigma x is acting in x direction sigma x acting in x direction it will be tensile the deformation also will be tensile so this will be positive but when sigma x acting in this direction it is the deformation will be in the elongation in x direction but in y and z direction it will be a contraction okay so this two will be negative this two are negative similarly when sigma y is acting in this direction in this direction it will be in a elongation so that means in y direction it will be positive this will be positive but when i when the sigma y is acting in this direction it, in this direction it is elongation but in an, an, another two direction it will be contraction okay here the all the lateral strain will be contraction so here this two times will be negative similarly here it is positive and this two times are negative so uh, we have to give the negative sign here so this is minus this one is minus this one is minus this one is minus this one all the time including mu will be minus all other are positive so here also this is minus this is minus this is minus this is minus 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 okay so this is the final equation this is the final equation sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e minus mu into sigma z by e in total strain y dash is equal to sigma y by e minus mu into sigma x by e minus mu into sigma z by e in z direction it is equal to sigma z by e minus mu into sigma x by e minus sigma mu into sigma y by e that is the triaxial deformation so we got the deformation in x y and z direction on a particular material the stress acting in x y z directions are sigma x sigma y sigma z then what is the stress in strain in x direction y direction in z direction can be calculated using this formula okay so this is a triaxial deformation for a biaxial deformation there will not be any stress in z direction the stress in z direction will be zero and the strain in z direction will be zero that is called biaxial deformation biaxial deformation the stress and the strain in this direction will be zero so we can um, generate a biaxial deformation from this equation remove all the stress sigma z terms from here okay so this will be the remaining this one will be the so of course this one also there is no it's a direction so these two equations are the biaxial deformation sigma x is um, strain in x direction is equal to sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e strain in y direction is equal to sigma y by e minus mu into sigma x by e that is the biaxial deformation okay Next, we already discussed about this uh, bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is the actor stressor by volumetric strain. The actor stressor by volumetric strain. <coughs> so, next, we are developing an equation for volumetric strain. So we know what is volumetric strain. So the strain in terms of volume, that is volumetric strain, that is equal to, we represent volumetric strain with the EV, that is equal to change in volume by original volume. Okay. And I'm going to uh, develop a relationship between the volumetric strain and the linear strain. The epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z are the linear strain. The strain in, so this is, epsilon x the strain in x direction epsilon x strain in y direction epsilon y strain in z direction epsilon z these three are linear strain and i am going to develop a relationship between this volumetric strain and 
this linear string okay for that again consider a cube subjected to direct stress that means every direction the stress acting is every direction the stress acting is say sigma okay so the side of the cube is equal to a so what is the initial volume of the cube initial volume volume is equal to a cube it's a cube so the total volume is equal to a cube and after application of this direct stress after application of this direct stress this side uh, length increase from a to a plus delta a this side length increase from a to a plus delta a okay so what is the final volume final volume will be each side increase by delta a so a plus delta a whole cube okay so each side has a dimension of a plus delta a so total volume is equal to a plus delta a whole cube so we can um, <coughs> this is the final volume so uh, we can expand this that is equal to uh, what is the change in volume here change in volume that is equal to final volume minus initial volume so a plus delta a whole cube minus a cube that is the change in volume so what is a plus we can expand this term so that is equal to a cube plus 3 a square delta a plus 3 a delta a square plus sorry um, square minus delta a whole cube that is expansion a plus delta a whole cube minus a cube the change in volume in this we can neglect the higher order terms <coughs> so we can neglect this one this one okay and uh, this one also this is delta a square so this one also can be neglect a cube minus a cube so the change in volume will be 3 a square delta a 3 a square delta a that is the change in volume so what is the um, volumetric strain volumetric strain is equal to change in volume by original volume so volumetric strain is equal to this is a change in volume so 3 a square delta a by original volume is equal to a cube okay so from this uh, we got this is equal to 3 delta a by a delta a by a what is delta a delta a is the change in length in these dimensions initially its length is a after this um, direct stress application length increase from a to a plus delta a so that is the change in length final length a plus delta a is the final length change in length is equal to delta a this is actually a linear strain delta a is the linear strain okay so delta a by a what is delta a by a that is a linear strain because this is a strain on this edge initially its length was a after the application of this direct stress is length changed from a to a plus delta a okay so the change in length is delta a change in length by original length is equal to delta a by a so this delta a by a is, is nothing but it is linear strain so 3 into instead of delta a by a we can write linear strain linear strain or we can say 3 into epsilon x 3 into um, linear strain or we can what are the linear strain the linear strain in x direction is equal to epsilon x y direction is equal to epsilon y is the direction is equal to epsilon z so these are the linear strains so 3 into z instead of 3 into z we write epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z that means the total volumetric strain total volumetric strain is equal to 
sum of the strain in x dash and y dash and an z dash sum of the linear strain in x y and z dash okay volumetric strain again bulk modulus is equal to ratio of bulk modulus we already discussed in the previous class it is a ratio of direct stress by this volumetric strain Okay, so this is the another elastic constant. So we discuss four elastic constants. Four elastic constants. What are they? The first one is Young's modulus or um, modulus of elasticity. Second one is shear modulus or modulus of rigidity. Third one is bulk modulus. Okay. And next one is Poisson's ratio mu. Okay, so actually this four elastic constants are the properties of a material. For a particular material, there will be a, four, a single value for these four elastic constants. If we change the material all four value will be different for that material so it is a material property okay and this is important all the four values is considered for a elastically behavior isotropic material under normal or shear here it is under normal condition normal loading condition it is it is under shear loading condition and this one is under Hydrostatic loading condition that means direct stress condition. Okay, this four elastic constants. And these four elastic constants are the properties of the material, and there is a relationship between these four elastic constants. There is a relationship between these four elastic constants. So I am not going to explain the derivation of this uh, the relationship. To establish the relationship of these four elastic constants that is uh, out of your syllabus but i will give a note not how we can derive this relationship between these four elastic constants and uh, after derivation we got the first relation is e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu so this is young modulus this is shear modulus or modulus or rigidity. This is bulk modulus. This is Poisson's ratio. So, this is the first relationship. E is equal to 2G into 1 plus mu. That means, Young's modulus is equal to 2 into shear modulus into 1 plus Poisson's ratio. That is the first relationship. So, from this we got the relationship between E, G and mu. But, there is no K term, bulk modulus term. So, we have another relationship that is E is equal to 3K into 1 minus 2 mu. This is the second relationship. E is equal to 3K into 1 minus 2 mu. So, that is the relationship between E, K and mu. Okay, so this is the relationship between these four elastic constants. And from this two equation, we can develop a relationship between E, G and K. E, G and K. For that, uh, just uh, multiply this equation. This equation with the 3K. Multiply this equation with the 3K. And multiply this equation with the G and from this we got <coughs> 3k e from the first equation is equal to 3k g into 2 plus 2 mu second equation after multiplication with the g um, g e equal to 3k g into 1 minus 2 mu Okay, then add these two equations together 
add this two equation together. So second equation will be g, this one. First equation will be 3k, this one. Add this two equation, then we got 3ke plus g, that is the left hand side of this equation, that is equal to 6kg plus 6kg mu plus 3kg minus 6kg mu. And here in this, this term and this term are cancelled. This is equal to 9kg. 3, sorry, e into, e into 3k plus g, that is the left hand side, is equal to 9kg. From this we got e is equal to, from this we got e is equal to 9kg divided by 3k plus g. So this is the relationship between these three elastic constants. Initially, relationship between this, uh, this two and uh, Poisson's ratio. That is the first equation. And second equation is the relation between this, this one and uh, this one and uh, this one and this one. That is the second equation. Third one is the relation between these three. So, we have 3 equation. E is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu. E is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu. E is equal to 9kg divided by 3k plus mu. So, that is the 3 equations uh, or 3 relationship between the elastic constants. Okay. <coughs> Next, uh, um, we, I already explain the range of this mu value the mu value range is between 0 and sorry minus 1 and 0.5 so mu value always for any material the mu value will not be greater than 0.5 it will be less than 0.5 and most of the material most of the material the mu value range is in between 0 and 0.5 0 and 0.5 okay so what is the importance of this 0.5 importance of this 0.5 so for that <coughs> we know e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu from this we got k is equal to e divided by 3 into 1 minus 2 mu from this equation okay so when the value is equal to 0 0.5 when the value is equal to 0 0.5 then what is this term 1 minus 2 into 0 0.5 that means 1 minus 1 this denominator will be 0 that means e minus 0 e by 0 when mu is equal to 0 0.5 k is equal to e by 0. What is k? k is equal to direct stress by volumetric strain. Okay. So, here the denominator is 0. That means the volumetric strain is equal to 0. Volumetric strain is equal to 0. What is volumetric strain? That is equal to change in volume by change in volume by original volume. That is equal to 0. Okay. That means EV equal to 0. We got EV equal to 0. What is EV? EV is equal to change in volume by original volume. If that value is equal to 0, that means change in volume will be change in volume will be 0. There is no change in volume. If mu is equal to 0.5. What is what happens when mu is greater than 0 0.5? If mu is greater than 0 0.5, then 1 minus 2 into some value which is greater than 0 0.5, always this term will be a negative one. Because 1 minus a higher term, higher value. So, so this denominator will be a negative one. That means k is equal to e divided by or k e 
something into k is equal to something for example r r into e minus r into e if this term is equal to negative then that negative term is 1 by r into e okay that means any of the elastic constants will be negative value it will be a negative value so this is not possible this is not possible the main reason is that if any particular elastic constant value is negative that means under normal load or under shear load under hydrostatic load the deformation will be in the opposite direction of the applied force if any of the any of the elastic constants elastic con constant is negative then it means that the deformation will be in the negative direction of the applied stress or in the opposite direction of the applied stress that means if e value is negative it means that when i apply tensile stress the material will experience a contraction normally when i when i apply a tensile force or tensile stress the material will elongate but if the e value is negative it means that when i apply tensile force material tends to contract it is not possible any material will not behave like this the deformation will be in the direction of applied force okay so if this three four elastic constants will not be negative so if the mu one is greater than 0.5 then any of the elastic constants value may be negative that is why the poisson's ratio always less than 0.5 okay so always less than 0.5 in actual practice there is no material has a value of poisson's ratio negative we commonly uh, com generally we can say this is zero zero less than mu less than 0.5 okay so this is the range of mu range of mu so that is about the poisson's ratio and the relationship between in the four elastic constants relationship between four elastic constants we already e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu e is equal to 9kg divided by 3k plus g so these three formulas are important you have to by heart this three formula um, any any uh, exams when it is um, s3 exam or in any competitive exam these formulas may help you okay so by heart this three formula so the relationship between the three la four elastic constants <clears throat> next one is home generalized hooke's law we already discussed about hooke's law next is generalized hooke's law generalized hooks law <clears throat> so we already discussed about hooks law this gives the relationship between stress and strain okay stress is directly proportional to strain within elastic limit for a homogeneous isentropic material okay stress is directly um, proportional to strain so that is the hooks law and we develop this relation for a um, one dimensional stress or one dimensional deformation here in the previous case the stress is only applied in single direction in x direction or y direction and the strain is also in the single direction so the stress by 
sigma x stress by strain is equal to Young's modulus. That is the Hooke's law. But in actual practice, the stress may be applied more than one direction. Okay, more than one direction. And in that case, we extend this equation. We now going to extend this equation to six rectangular components of stress. We already discussed about six rectangular components of stress for a three mutually perpendicular plane passing through a point. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau x, y, tau, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. These are the three linear stress, normal stress, tau x, y, tau x, z, tau y, z. These are the six rectangular components of stress tenses. Components in the stress tenses to define the state of stress at a point. These are the six stress, um, stress components. Okay. So next I am going to extend this Hooke's law. We have only E is equal to sigma x by epsilon E. Next I am going to extend this Hooke's law into this six rectangular components of stress or six rectangular components of straight. Okay. So this is the mathematical expression for uh, stress strain equation. This one is the mathematical expression for the stress strain equation. And here in this sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau x y, tau y z, tau x z. Okay. These are the six rectangular components. We are going to establish a relationship between stress and strain. That is Hooke's law. Stress and strain. So these are the six rectangular components, stress components for a particular point P. Okay, state of stress at a point P. And the st stress at a, in the direction of X equal to a coefficient, a constant, A11 into strain in X direction plus A12, another constant, Strain in y direction, uh, that is epsilon y y. A13, strain in z direction, plus A14, in gamma x y, that is the shear strain in x y plane. Another constant, A15, gamma y z, shear strain in y z plane. Then A16, into gamma z x. Okay, we have six stress components these are the six stress components we have strict six strain components also on a particular point we already discussed all these things in the last module okay six strain strain components as well as six stress components so these are the six stress components and epsilon xx epsilon y by epsilon z these are the linear strain components on a point Gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x are the linear, sorry, shear strain components in the x y, y z, x z planes. And how they are related? Sigma x is equal to a constant into this three linear uh, strain values and a constant into shear strain values. Similarly, sigma y is equal to the Components of strains are same, but the constants will be different. Here it is A11, but here it is A21, A22, A23, etc. For sigma z also, the strain times are same, but the constants are different. Then tau xy, tau xy, that is equal to, again, a different constants into strain, strain components. Tau y is a different constant into strain components again tau is x. So this is the relationship between the six components of stress at a point and the stress six strain components at a point. Okay. And we can write this in another form. That means strain is equal to strain in x dash is equal to 
B11, another constant, B11 in the stress, B12 in the stress in y direction, B13 in the stress in z direction, B14 in the tau x by B15 in the tau x by z, B16 in the tau z. Similarly, we can write all the strain values here in the same manner. So, this is called generalized equation for Hooke's law or constitutive equation. Okay. So, it's very simple equation and in matrix form we can write in a simplified matrix form we can write sigma is equal to the coefficient or constant A into strain. The strain matrix can be written as strain is equal to a constant into stress. And in this B, the matrix B, the, the matrix of constants is called complaint matrix, complaints matrix. And the matrix of A is called elasticity or stiffness matrix. So we already discussed the simple um, slow equation that is stress is equal to a constant into strain. But here the constant will be a matrix. The constant, the previous we discussed the constant is E, x modulus. But actually, in a when we consider a point, stress at a point or strain at a point, that constant will be a matrix. And of course, this stress and the strain also a will be a matrix. In this stress matrix, there are six stress components. The strain matrix, there are six strain components. The constant, how many number of constants? Total 36 constants. There are total 36 constants. This is the matrix form of that equation. Here in this, there are 36 constants. Okay. And we can reduce these equations by applying different assumptions. I am not explaining the assumptions different constant value can be equal to we can put zero value for the um, different constant values okay and al also different constant values are equal and all these things are done by assuming different conditions okay these constant values may be equal or equal to zero this is by assuming different conditions Okay, I am not going to explain all these things, but this is the final equation after omitting different uh, constants in the equation. Here only three, two unique constants, two unique constants. What are they? A44. A44 is a, A44 here, A44 is there, A11 is here, A12 is here. There are three constants, but a44 is equal to A11 minus A12 by 2. Okay. That means here, actually here we have 3 constants, but unique constants are 2. A11 and A12. Because we can relate A44 with the A11 and A12. Okay. So, we can neglect that. So, total only 3 constants. We reduce this 36 constants into 3 constants by applying different assumptions. So this is the final equation. Okay, so this is the stress matrix. We can see is six state of uh, stress components, rectangular stress components. This is the strain matrix, six rectangular strain components, and this is the matrix called stiffness matrix or elasticity matrix. And this is the relationship between the stress and strain. Hooke's law, generalized Hooke's law. We can apply this Hooke's law for a, any point on a material okay and this is not the uh, it's not for a property it is applied on a material okay for a linear elastic isotropic material we can apply this equation okay this is a generalized Hooke's law and this equation can be extend to um, to calculate the constants, the A11, A12, etc., we can convert this A11 and A12 after some derivations, and we can convert in terms of these elastic constants. 
a11 a12 constants in the stiffness matrix this constants a11 a12 constants in the stiffness matrix can be represent in the form of elastic constants e mu k g etc so this is the converted form so stress matrix is equal to e divided by 1 plus mu into 1 minus mu into here instead of the constants we write 1 minus mu mu 1 minus 2 mu by 2 etc into strain matrix okay similarly we can write the strain stress relationship this is the strain stress relationship to calculate the strain from the stress we use this relationship that is in 1 by e and all the stems are mu this is mu this is 2 plus 2 mu and in this in this <coughs> here we can apply the relationship uh, that is 2g into e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu where we can see here we have it sorry we can apply the here instead of this term we can use g how we know e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu Oh, sorry uh, instead of e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 3k into 1 minus 2 here we can use e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 here in this equation here it is there is a e term and 1 minus 2 mu term so instead of e into 1 minus 2 mu we can write k we can write not k uh, k is equal to from this k is equal to e divided by 3 into 1 minus 2 mu so re, we can replace by this e during the calculation process not directly by e there will be some multiplication with the e not directly this is not e 1 minus 2 mu by 2 is not e but using this equation we can um, write this term in terms of e Okay, so that is the generalized Hooke's law. And the problems are very simple uh, using these elastic constants. For example, uh, we can you see this form problem. A bar with a 12 mm diameter is acted upon an axial load of 20 kN. The change in diameter is measured as 0 0.003 mm. Determine. The position ratio, modulus elasticity, bulk modulus, modulus of modulus rigidity is um, 80 giga Pascal. Okay, here in, in this type of problem, uh, every values are given. So um, we can calculate the position ratio by calculating lateral strain and the linear strain, longitudinal strain. From this, we can calculate the position ratio. Then, using the equation e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu, we can calculate the e value. Same way. Uh, using the relation between e and k e and k um, we can calculate the k value also okay so this is a simple problem so if you have to do uh, two or three problems uh, using the relationship between the elastic constants okay so this is about uh, generalized rules so, um, Initially, we studied the Hooke's law applied for a rod subjected to tensile or single simple tensile or compressive stress. Then we studied the Hooke's law for a stress acting at a point P. Okay, on a point P, there are six stress components, and how these stress, six stress components are related to these six strain components on that point? That is generalized the Hooke's law. Okay, so uh, after this uh, next uh, uh, next class we will discuss about the axial deformation. Okay, that axial deformation 
is based on this hooks law okay so okay thank you